follow along as we review the effectiveness of self-fitting over-the-counter hearing aids. Hi, I'm Dr. Egan, and today we're going to do a little bit of an experience with some over-the-counter sound amplifiers. Our patient care coordinator, Nathalie, has agreed to be part of the experiment, and if you look at her recent hearing test, um, she has actually a mild to moderate low frequency hearing loss in both of her ears, but more so in the right ear. And so because she is in that mild to moderate category where hopefully over-the-counter hearing aids will be available, we thought she would be the perfect person to test out some different sound amplifiers. And that's what we're going to walk through next. But first, Nathalie is going to talk to us about her experience wearing these devices over the past few days. So they're bulky in the ear, and for me, these actually made people sound further away. I seem to have trouble with lower tones, and I would say that this picks up more trouble for me. Um, and I tried to adjust it in the app but I found that I didn't notice a big difference. Um, and I tried it in a number of settings, I tried it in the grocery store, through a drive-through, hanging out in the house. Um, I tried a number of the settings that were in the app and I found that everything just sounded like it was coming from weird angles. I couldn't quite locate sound quite as well. And I didn't hear those lower tones that I needed as much. Right. So what we are going to do today is use these new Hira IQ Buds. They're some of the most popular sound amplifiers right now. And we are going to use real ear measurement to see exactly what they're doing. And if they are providing adequate prescriptive sound for what Nathalie is missing. And because her hearing is worse in her right ear, that's what we're going to start with. So I'm gonna use our real ear measurement system. This is our, our measurement microphone and I'm gonna put that in her ear. And then we're going to put the hearing device in her ear. You're gonna feel this kind of wiggle as it goes in your ear. Some people are more ticklish than others. <laughs> Definitely am. Okay. Ooh, you have little ears. Is that how it was fitting when you were wearing it around? Yeah, and it honestly says that they were too small. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so what we're gonna do now is she's gonna hear a passage about carrots the vegetable, and we're gonna see exactly what those hearing aids are doing. A carrot is a long a carrot is a long reddish yellow vegetable which has several thin leaves on a long stem and which belongs to the parsley family. Carrots are grown all over the world in gardens and in the wild in the fields. So this is how you had set them. Okay. So she had several days to kind of use them, try to crank things up where she felt like it would help. And if you look at this screen here, are you able to see? Perfect. So these purple dots are her prescription and the purple line is what we measured. So, you know, this confirms my concerns about over-the-counter devices. They're a lot less sophisticated than even entry-level hearing aids. There are less features that you can use, but more importantly, none of what she was hearing was anywhere near the prescription that she needed. And so, you know, for saving, you know, $500 here and there, but you're not receiving any of the benefit that you actually need, if you had purchased these hearing aids, it would have been a complete waste of money. Yep. And so, you know, the moral of the story really is before you go looking into these kinds of devices, to make sure your hearing is tested by an audiologist and to make sure that you understand exactly what you're getting into because more often than not, you're buying something hoping that it will help and the difference it is making is going to be slim to none. Thanks for helping with this, Nathalie. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please give Now Hear This Clinic a call. Otherwise, have a wonderful rest of your day and enjoy this photo of my dog.